In today's whiteboard leadership moment, I want to talk about on-ramping leadership, and I'm specifically talking about lay leadership, uh, deacons and elders and uh, people who are in, in leadership that maybe don't have a, a staff position, um, but are absolutely essential for the life uh, of the church. I know many, many churches that are wrestling with this. I want to figure out the next steps uh, to take. And in fact, can converge. We now have a seminar on uh, church and board interactions that we're looking forward to unveiling very, very, very soon. Hopefully, you'll be a part of that. But let's just have this conversation about onboarding uh, leadership. The first thing to think about is how do we identify them? How do we recognize those who might be able to be in leadership? Well, a lot of times you see them in ministry and. And you, you kind of see what, what's happening then. But you got to remember, there's what, what's happening in real life, and then there's the context of leadership in the church. Every time, you, every time you put in new leaders, you're either raising the bar or you're lowering the bar. And so the question is, what is the bar of leadership? Like at our church, one of the things that we did was we understood that we had our, our mission, vision, and values. We had our doctrinal distinctives. We had our purpose and things like that. But we also had a culture of, of what it meant to be all in in our church. And so we took our, our doctrine, we took our mission, vision, values, we took the expectations of, of involvement, of membership, and things like that. We added into it other things that were just part of the leadership culture of our church. And we began to create a filter. Uh, we began to, to look and, and kind of create tiers of leadership. Those who actually qualified the all-ins uh, right now, those who maybe be one or two things away. For example, in our church, we required that the people will be tithing, giving 10% of their income to the church. And they may have everything else, but they're not giving to the church. Uh, and we had others, we had a third tier that was, no, they're nowhere close yet, but they're young leaders in the church that are walking with God. And if they continue to walk for the next five to 10 years, they're just going to be in a place where God's going to use them in a mighty way. And so what we did is we, we took the first tier and just put them in a pool. And I'll talk about what we did with them next. And then we had a second tier that we asked uh, an elder or a leader to go and mentor them in this area. Or perhaps in the case of giving, I would go talk to them about maybe stepping up to the level that they qualified in every other area, but this is an area to, to work on. And just challenge them in their marriage or in their finances or in their discipleship or in their service or whatever that one or two areas may be. And hopefully a year from now, we could look at them as a potential leader in that particular area of ministry. And the third group, uh, those young people, we just, we just chose to go and encourage them. I remember one time I walked up to a young man, he's about 25 years old, and said, listen, uh, we were just having this conversation about leadership in the church, and, and uh, your name came up, and I just want you to know, keep walking with Jesus, keep serving in the church, and one day, one day, I'm pretty sure you'll be in a high level of leadership in this place, and God's going to use you in a powerful way. Well, it was a number of years later, but he eventually came on our board. He was the best board member I think I've ever had, not to offend all of those who are watching right now that were my board members, but I think it was fantastic because he took that charge and he walked with Jesus in that, in that charge. Identify them. And, and so then what we do is we'd filter and refine. We take those, we take those, uh, those top candidates and what we do is put them in a, in a group. And I created a kind of a reading group with them where we would just, we'd read leadership things together. And what I was looking for are the four C's of leadership. I was looking at their character. Are they really the leaders I thought they were and how they interact with people? I looked at their competency. Did they know how to speak leadership? Did they understand and grasp the situations of, of ministry? Did they understand the culture of the church, how we make decisions, the, the style, the pace, the priorities, the things that we did talk about, the things that we kind of let go, the things that were urgent and important to, to us? And, and then finally, um, chemistry. How do they interact with other, other people? There are a whole lot of really competent people out there, but if they don't have chemistry, if the, if the dynamic of the team is not good, the ministry is not going to go anywhere. People can have great competency, but they're lacking character or chemistry. It's going to be very difficult to move forward. And we would just kind of do that, and we would, we would refine them and try to help them to, to grow. We use this filter, if you will, to figure out which ones to put up, because uh, very often we, didn't, we had a few positions, but we had lots of candidates to go into those positions as we did the, the identifying and the filtering. Next, we would put them in a situation where they're, they're interacting and observing with the existing leadership team. In other words, they would have a voice in the conversations, they just wouldn't have a vote. So we'd invite them to a, a board meeting or to a leadership meeting and say, please sit in and please have the conversation, and interact with us. We just want to see how this works. So it's like a dating service, you know, where you're, you're kind of saying, well, is this 
are we going to get married or not? Is this, is this going to work or not? And allow us to look at the chemistry, the culture, and all the other C's and just figure things out, whether that was a, a fit or not. And then what would happen at the end of it, they would kind of vote on us and we would kind of vote on them. And so they said, you know, I, I, I don't think I fit this group. They could, they could say no. Or we could say, you know what, there's this one thing still missing and here's what it is and we could work on it for another year. But it gave them a real life scenario where they could see how we actually interacted as a team, as a board, as, as, a, as a group. Next, I would encourage you, because I don't see this very much anymore, there should be some sort of installation. This is spiritual leadership. This is, this is church leadership. This is God's movement. And to have a moment that's a sacred moment, a moment where they're, they're recognizing this is a heavy burden. Uh, you know, James says, hey, be, be careful if you're a teacher, you have a stricter judgment. And so I just, just want to say, hey, it's really important to have some sort of moment, whether it's a laying on of hands like you see in Acts chapter 13, or whether it's a, a public ceremony, something has to happen where they recognize it's a holy moment and this is a high, high privilege and responsibility. After that, there should be an orientation. Now, beyond the gathering together, the orientation would have things like the covenant of how we're going to treat each other, uh, the history of the board or the organization, the future, where we're headed, how we interact with each other, what we do and don't do, what we should expect, and, and all the commitments. Make sure that everything's clear as this person moves on to the team. And then finally, ongoing mentoring and evaluation. A lot of times people get into a team, they've never been a part of a team before, uh, they don't know the context of what's been happening over the discussions over the last number of months or, or years. And there just needs to be some, someone who's kind of like a buddy, a buddy system where they, they kind of explain to them what's happening in the life of this organization and how we view things and how we approach things. And beyond that, there should be a regular evaluation. Just because someone is on a team in this moment doesn't mean they should be on the team five years from now. Now, I know a whole lot of churches have elders for life. And I, I think that's kind of a dangerous thing to do because uh, the pastor changes, the, the uh, vision changes, other things change. So you got to be real careful uh, about, uh, about placing people in a, in a, in a, in a titled role or a, uh, a never-ending role because uh, God changes things. Churches change, community change, uh, people change. And we've got to make sure that we're united in spirit and intent on one purpose. This has been a Converge Whiteboard Leadership Moment. To learn more about Converge or to join us, check out converge.org.